I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Zion City Council. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Here. Commissioner Frierson? Here. Commissioner McDowell? Here. Commissioner Fisher? Here. Mayor McKinney? The next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. Mr. Bremner, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I wish you pledge of allegiance to the flag. It's up to you, so Here whatever you, however you'd like to proceed. Oh, there he is. Across. Okay. Okay. Let's all sit in silence. Welcome, uh, Pastor Carlson. Step on up. Uh, you're next <laughs> on the agenda tonight. Thank you very much. I just received in the mail my Medicare card, so I'm getting old. Thank you, God in heaven, for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for all the things you give us to make up this wonderful thing we call life. Thank you for our community. We love the people around us. We love the opportunity to serve. We thank you, Father, for those who do their job well and keep our streets safe and help us live the life you've given us. I pray, Father, for great grace and blessing and peace as we continue to move into chaotic times. I pray, Father God, you'd help us in Zion to be an example to the communities around us. Father, and each of us individually, to our neighbors and friends, we pray, Father God, that we would do the things you want us to do with the power of Jesus, who loves us and gives us not just this life, but everlasting life through his Son. I thank you for these good folks that are not just uh, the leaders I look up to, but my friends and my neighbors. I pray, Father, for good things tonight, good things for our city this year. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs> thank you, Pastor Carlson. The next item up are agenda changes. Do any of the commissioners have any agenda changes? Is there a motion to accept the agenda? So moved. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner Frierson? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Fisher? Aye. <laughs> next up on the agenda is citizens' comments. It looks like we have some comments here this evening. Uh, first up, Mr. Bremner. Mayor Pro Tem Fisher, gentle lady, honorable oh. sirs, I stand before you this evening first to give you a little bit of history. Several years ago, I was present in these chambers uh, when your predecessors on the council passed an ordinance calling for inspection of rental units uh, at the request of the involving complaints of residents of the city who said that they were living in substandard rental units. Uh, road infection, lack of heat, lack of hot water, inadequate electricity, trash not getting picked up, a myriad of complaints. Uh, as a result, the city council I don't remember whether it was under Mayor Harrison or Mayor Hill, passed an ordinance calling for regular inspection of rental units, uh, I believe at residents' requests, but I don't remember all the details. The city was to be divided into four quadrants with one inspector to be hired for each quadrant. The inspectors would be equipped with a list from the uh, uh, director of building uh, bring apartments up to code. Last week in Chicago Tribune, there's an article saying that Chicago should not follow Zion's lead in inspecting apartments, and that Zion apparently had been sued and agreed 
that the inspections would stop unless it was specifically uh, requested by residents. I don't know what ensued after the ordinance was passed, but apparently inspectors were going, were going into apartments without permission, a violation of the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. Uh, permission to approach them. Yes, sir, you may. Thank you very much, sir. Permission to stand down. Uh, yes, sir, thank you. Mary Lou Hildebrand. I do thank you all for your time and courtesy, your attention to this matter, and to your time and courtesy and attention at the township meeting within the last hour when I brought something to your attention. All right, thank, thank you, you, sir. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Parkham, and Commissioners. During the month of December, your ESDA volunteers gave 69 and a quarter hours of service for our savings to the city of 20 of $2,060. We assisted the fire department with rehab at a fire and performed the monthly siren test. We assisted the park district with the trail of lights and with the food pantry and we opened the center for the annual fire alarm inspection. Members spent duty times for maintenance and upkeep of the center and equipment needed to perform our services and also in training. If you are interested in being a positive force in our city, please consider volunteering. You can apply on the city website. Thank you for your continued support. Thank you, as always, Mary. Thank you. And I'll make sure I'll try to get this name right. Crystal and Carcion? Or is it Encarsa? I'm explaining to me. Okay. So it's Crystal and Carcion. And Carcion. Okay, thank I, you. I'm here today, and I've already spoken to Richard. So it was about some trash that's in the back of the stores along 173, and we can just get that cleaned up. He assured me that he can send somebody over there, so I think I'm done. Oh, oh, well, we got to win. We got to win. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank, Thank you for bringing it to our attention. Uh, Douglas Ower. Good evening, Mayor Fulton and Council. Um, I just want to bring your attention to something that's come up. The Forest Preserve is planning uh, next month on passing a memorandum of agreement to uh, allow, uh, uh, to proceed to expand the airport from 6,000 foot runway to 7,000 foot. I think the airport will directly impact the city. As you already noticed, we get a lot of jet, jet flights all the way across the city. They're low because they're in landing configuration and a longer runway will allow for larger jets and um, more jets and more emissions, more noise. Um, I don't know if the city's had a presentation from the airport. Have they ever come in for a presentation? Uh, I think I can answer this. I do believe that Mayor McKinney was part of a presentation of the, the proposed expansion that was probably over a year ago. I have not heard anything about it since. Well, they did go into Wadsworth, for example, uh, and it was a while ago because they basically put everything on hold last year, but they did go in, and Wadsworth subsequently voted against the expansion. I think the city should ask for a similar presentation uh, and have an opportunity to weigh in because I think Zion will be one of the most impacted towns by the expansion. In addition to that, um, the Forest Reserve will be giving up 52 acres of our public lands to the airport for this airport extension. So I just, uh, I think that it would benefit the city for if you look into this now rather than wait until it's too late to really have any, any input um, to the Forest Reserve. If the Forest Reserve doesn't go ahead, they can't lengthen the runway. They have to have Forest Reserve land to do it. And in my opinion, they don't need a longer runway. Midway Airport, the longest runway at Midway Airport is 6,500 feet. And they're talking about 7,000 feet here in Milwaukee, and it's just not needed. Thank you. Thank you. And as always, thank everyone for coming coming out and, you know, participating in the meeting. We appreciate it. The next item up on them is the consent agenda. Clerk Spooner. Approval of minutes of a regular meeting held on December 20th, 2022 at 7 p.m. 
<coughs> is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner Frierson? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Fisher? Aye. The next item on the agenda, consent agenda. Bills, vouchers 142238 through 142352, drawn on Huntington National Bank. Total $1,465,142.72. Is there a motion to approve the bills? I'll make the motion. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner Frierson? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Fisher? Aye. The next item up is considering passing ordinances as follows. 7A, authorizing an intergovernmental agreement for participation in the mutual aid box alarm system per Chief Street. Well, good evening, commissioners and Mayor Pro Tem. This should hopefully be an easy one. Uh, attached in your packet is an updated Mavis, Illinois Master Agreement along with a cover letter describing why the overall agreement for emergency organizations was recently updated. This was an undertaking that started in 2019. In summary, the changes address emergency response updates, certifications, and liability toward immunity protections, which are especially critical when our resources are sent outside the state of Illinois or received from surrounding states. The revisions also align the agreement with the National Incident Management System and interstate mutual aid laws and provides for third-party recovery under spiller pays, technical rescue recovery, and patient billing. Finally, the agreement streamlines the process for individual states to participate in the Mavis system through a network of divisions within a state chapter. I respectfully request approval of this updated master agreement. Uh, all fire EMS agencies in the state have been asked to review and approve this. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Any questions or discussions for the Chief Street? No. That seems, seems pretty straightforward. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner Frierson? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Fisher? Aye. The next item on the agenda, 7B, regarding the disposition of surplus property per Chief Barton. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners. Good evening. Uh, tonight I respectfully request that the following vehicles be declared surplus property and be approved <coughs> uh, and approved to be auctioned through the Clinton Auto Auction in Southern Illinois. <coughs> the, the three vehicles we have are three 2013 uh, Dodge Chargers, as you can see the VINs. All these vehicles listed above are in a state of disrepair or are, or are cost prohibitive to maintain an operational value at this time. Is there a motion on this request? I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion or questions? So we got all the good out of these, right? They're they're dead. They're done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes. Aye. Commissioner Frierson. Aye. Commissioner McDowell. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Fisher. Aye. Seven <laughs> C. Authorizing and approving agreement with the aforementioned Clinton Auto Auction for the disposition of surplus vehicles per Chief Barton. I think this is part two of the same thing, right? It it kind of is. Thank you again, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners. Um, this part is, I, I'll respectfully request the council to renew the city's contract with Clinton Auto Auction for the purpose of the transport auction and awarding of proceeds from vehicle seized pursuant to the asset <coughs> forfeiture process. The Clinton Auto Auction is approved by the state of Illinois to fulfill this role for law enforcement <coughs> agencies within the state. The city of Zion and Clinton Auto Auction have had contract for these services for more than 10 years. This is just a continuation. There was slight, one slight add-on change in your packet. Um, because of holiday schedules, we, we had a little bit of an issue getting the, the uh, actual contract to us in time for your packet. That was adjust. There wasn't a slight adjustment for the cleanup fee uh, from thirty-five to thirty dollars. So it's a slight uh, decrease in cost for us. That was the only change in that in that new contract. Um, I noticed a couple other changes in this new agreement. So uh, for. Yeah. Section five, we also have a max of two hundred dollars. 
uh, and then the term extends from 2023 to 2025. Is that? That is correct, yeah. Okay. All right. Is there a motion on this request? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion or questions? All right. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner Frierson? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Fisher? Sure. Aye. Item 8A. Getting ahead of myself. Consider zoning docket 22Z40 and ordinance requesting an extension to the special use permit to operate a truck parking and maintenance facility located at 200 Green Bay Road per Director Ionson. Planning and Zoning Commission recommends approval. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Industrial Outdoor Ventures is requesting a 180-day extension for special use permit for the uh, truck parking and maintenance facility property located at 200 North Green Bay Road. They have submitted several drawings for review, but are still working on the building drawings and will not meet the six-month deadline for permit to request for extension. Is there a motion? We'll make that motion. Second. Uh, discussion? Questions? <laughs> so this is, uh, I do have, this is just to clarify for the public, this is going to be a new facility. That, am I correct? This is the new facility that's going to be up by the north end of north Trumpet Park? Trumpet Park, yes. Uh, so. Trumpet Park. And uh, just refresh my memory, how many vehicles are they looking to be able to accommodate? They're just paying on like a thousand stalls. All right, we have a motion and a second. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner Ferguson? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Fisher? Aye. Item 8B, consider zoning docket 23Z3 and ordinance requesting a special use permit to continue the use of the living quarters located at 4242 Illinois Route 173 for Director Ionson Planning and Zoning Commission recommends approval with the conditions. Thank you, sir. GWS has Zion LLC, clear home self-storage is seeking a special use permit to continue the use of the living quarters located the old Captain Hook storage at 4242 Route 173. The original special use for living quarters becomes now void when there's a change in ownership as in this case. The January 5th, 2023 Planning Zoning Commission recommends to approve the request with the condition that it conforms to the original special use. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. <coughs> Any discussion or questions? I, I just wanted just to, to clarify, is there currently somebody residing in the living quarters now or is it just used for, uh, I, th I think the original use was for a caretaker? That's going to be the same use. It's actually vacant at this time. We can get a special use for it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner Frierson? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Fisher? Aye. We're not rushing through this. This is just this is just the pace we're going. I just want to let everybody know. Uh, 8C, consider to request to purchase a vehicle in the police department for Chief Barton. All right, I think I'm done after this again. I don't know what Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners. Uh, I respectfully request the approval to purchase a vehicle that will replace uh, aging unmarked police squad as well as uh, squads that were recently involved in total loss accidents. My request is to utilize the funds received from the insurance company payout for a replacement vehicle in the amount not to exceed $20,410. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Any questions or discussion? So, um, one of the vehicles being replaced is a, a, an undercover vehicle? Yes, sir. So, we are, we are 
trying to make best use of funds that we've already we've already spent these monies mm -hmm. uh, on cars previously. When when they were crashed, they we got a va we got some money back out of it. We didn't get the full value of what we spent, of course, but. We're trying to not reach into new funds from the city and reutilize these funds already. Because those vehicles were crashed, we we still need it, unfortunately. Um, so we're we, to, to be able to do the job of the undercover work or whatever's whatever's happening or detective work that's happening. We still need a vehicle. So this was our best, what we thought. Hopefully, you approve our our best way of utilizing funds that we've already outlaid. And it's no additional cost to the city to procure a vehicle. It's a used vehicle. We understand there's risk there, but it it, it better suits what we're trying to do and stay within budget. Right. Um, if there's nothing further, clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes, aye. Commissioner Farson, aye. Commissioner McDowell, aye. Mayor Pro aye. Okay. Item 8D, consider proposal from Christopher Burke Engineering for engineering services for the proposed 2023 water main replacement project and to advertise for bids per Director Roberts. Thank you, sir. Attached, we'll have in front of you a proposal from Christopher Burke Engineering Services for the proposed 2023 water main replacement project. The proposal is providing the engineering design and preparation of bidding documents for the replacement of approximately 4,000 linear feet of existing water mains that were installed in 1928 and have been experiencing multiple breaks. Bid documents will include a base bid and three alternate bids. Staff requests and recommends approving of the proposal for engineering services from Christopher Burke Engineering for a cost of $112,700 and to uh, advertise for bids. Funding for these services are a budgeted item within the fiscal year 23 water fund. Is there a motion on this uh, proposal? Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. Discussion, questions? Uh, Director Roberts, I have one small question about the uh, material used, it lists the PVC or the ductile iron. Um, is that really a choice or what, what's the standard there that we use? Per our code, you can use either or. So we always put that down there hopefully to get uh, a difference in pricing. Gotcha. Thank you. Not sure which one is less cost right now. Is it both high or not? <laughs> hmm. 1928, huh? Yeah, thanks for thinking ahead and um, <laughs> replacing some of these almost 100-year-old pipes. Getting there. We have 20% uh, of our water mains are of this era, yes. approximately, so glad and they're hanging out. 20% equates to right around 32 miles yeah. of our total water. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's about time to replace them, you think? Yeah. <laughs> All right. This particular area where we, we put on here, um, we just recently have had almost seven breaks in that area since Christmas. Well, I was 100 years old, I'd be breaking too, so. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. Um, if there's anything further, we got it. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner Frierson? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Fisher? Aye. Item 8E, consider proposal from Christopher Burke Engineering for Engineering Services for the 2023 Road and Alley Program to advertise for bids per Director Roberts. Thank you again, sir. Attached, you will find a proposal from Christopher Burke Engineering Services for the 2023 Road and Alley Program Engineering for Engineering Services. The proposal is providing the engineering design and preparation of bidding documents for the resurfacing and reconstruction of approximately 11 blocks of city streets and three alleys. Bid documents will include a base bid and three alternate bids. Staff requests and recommends approving the proposal 
for engineering services from Christopher Burke Engineering for a cost of $45,100 and to uh, advertise for bids. Funding for these services are a budgeted item within the fiscal year 23 MFP fund. Is there a motion on this proposal? So move. Second. Discussion? Um, just to, for planning ahead so mm -hmm. that we can get construction underway during the uh, warmer months and have our road prepared in time for next winter. And we got to start this early, don't we? Yes. Yeah. Especially to get out the bid, that way we'll uh, hopefully get some better pricing. That's why we always put in the alternate bid. Uh, not that we'll be able to award all three, but the hope is that. Yeah. The total, total distance covered, how many miles is that? 1.2? Something like that. Yeah, that's, I think that's <coughs> now yeah, eleven blocks. That's about right. Yeah, I think it's one point two. Okay. All right. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes. Aye. Commissioner Frierson. Aye. Commissioner McDowell. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Fisher. Aye. <laughs> Item eight F. Consider proposals for new phone system per Administrator Nable. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners. This is a, a project long overdue um, that Clerk Spooner did all the work on and I just get to come and take credit for. So that, that will be noted in your review. Thank you, thank you. Um, so our phone system is very antiquated and actually no longer supported. Uh, so we were looking at options not only to save money but just get current with uh, with our system. So um, Clerk Spooner and Jim Key from Computer Health Key have been working with Cindy Kolick from Sandler Partners, who is actually here to answer all the technical stuff if there are questions, um, to get proposals on basically uh, an entire new system, a VoIP system, voice over internet, um, and get us into you know we're trying to jump to pass the 2000s and actually be in the 2020s. So um, this will upgrade our, our entire system um, and uh, will actually save about $1,100 a month over our current cost with AT&T and the, the current uh, contracts that we have. So it's a definitely a win-win. Um, the proposal is actually to go with FirstCom. We got close to FirstCom and SNET. Um, the initial setup costs are a little higher on uh, FirstCom, but um, staff from all departments actually demoed both products for needs uh, of their departments, and all agreed that FirstCom is a better choice. Um, they're a little they're a little cheaper on the monthly cost, um, but a little higher on the on the setup. Um, both of these, what's not included in here, is there's also uh, some upgrades to our network that need to be done that computer help you would be about, be about $1,500 that's not reflected in here, but we'd have to do that under either proposal, so we didn't factor that into this, this decision. So um, they said it'd probably be like a day to just get it all set up once, once they got all the supplies and the hardware and everything in. Um, so we, we want to start on the upgrades and then get everything ordered. So I would recommend uh, approving the proposal from uh, FirstCom for hosted phone service. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. All right. I'll open it up for discussion. Questions? Just to, uh, how many phone numbers is included in, in this? How, how many? It, it's basically whatever we need for the number of, of units that we have throughout the city. Okay. Can you add numbers? I mean, we want to replace the numbers that we have, but can you add numbers? Yes. Yes. We. It's. A modular system where we could add handsets as we hopefully expand. Can you forward calls from the phone numbers to the city? Uh, can you forward it to my cell phone? Yes. And I'd like to request a city phone number. <laughs> um, and maybe all of the other commissioners would like a city phone number. I, I, I have one. You have one? <laughs> 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 oh boy. <laughs> We'll take that in class. All right. <laughs> Add that to my review, too. <laughs> I, uh, 
there's a lot more capabilities actually for even answering calls at, at your computer or using your computer for yeah. um, transporting the actual handsets to if you're working from home, it'll ring there, call forwarding, but we will All right. we will make sure you get set up. I, I think uh, <laughs> Clerk Spooner got that in the, in the record there that <laughs> Commissioner McDowell wants a phone number. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I do have a couple of questions about um, redundancy and in case of emergencies and um, this the system is going to be this is going to be cloud based. Yes. So, what's our contingencies if we lose the cloud for some reason? Do we have alternates? Do we still have landline redundancy? Or are we covered on those bases? Um, we basically have, first of all, none of this has to do with anything for emergency dispatching right. or anything of that nature. Um, I, I don't know if Sydney might be able to answer more of that, but we do have, obviously, our cell phones alternate um, in the case of an emergency for, I mean, if something goes down with cloud, we've got a lot of problems, but, um, but yeah, I mean, we, we, we have our cell phones, city cell phones as backup for for operations, just like we have in our normal emergency operations plans for for calls. But if you lose cell phone connectivity due to the system being overwhelmed, or a I hate to say it, if there was a disaster of sufficient severity, what's our backup? I could speak to that a little bit. There's Cindy, you could probably correct me, but there's redundancy within the system, um, meaning there's two sites where the where they operate like a server type thing for the cloud access. But as far as cell phone use goes, all of our city phone numbers through Verizon have a priority line. So we we won't lose, if an emergency of that catastrophic of a nature, we can connect to each other. We have a prioritized line okay. um, through Verizon uh, specific to that. It's very similar to that of like AT&T FirstNet where they have a like a it's basically cut off and it's separate, but Verizon includes everything. They just prioritize our line. But as far as security goes, if there's there's redundancy within the system, so if one server goes down or is attacked, cyber t attack, the other one uh, operates. The security, as we discussed uh, at that at, at the initial meetings for all these, um, they are required to maintain the highest level of security that any other um, business company or anything like that would, would offer. As far as the uh, dispatching services, that's all separate. Our radios are separate. So if, we, if, if you're talking like a major catastrophic issue, we're going to have a lot of problems. If our cell phones don't work, our radios don't work, um, we're, we're, we're going to go to smoke signals. But let's hope we don't go there. <laughs> but um, yeah. the Internet itself, um, because of the way the Internet works, it's, it's, it's a web of, you know, so it, the Internet can't really go down. I mean, I guess... I guess there's certain things like if you shut Google down, I guess it could, but for this system, that's that's not what we're looking at. And what we also have set can set up is for each direct dial number that's on the system, we can have it set up with a disaster recovery number. So a cell phone number can be already pre-programmed in, in the setup um, when we're getting all of the information from the city on how they want to set up. We can already have those phone numbers pre-programmed as their disaster recovery failover number. Mm -hmm. So if the internet to one of the buildings is out and the physical desk phone or a computer can't be reached, it can automatically, the cloud-based system can automatically reroute those calls to that person's cell phone, individual cell phone. One other question that you had about uh, redundancy for um, landlines. <clears throat> the, the purpose for this is actually our, our PRI, which is the group from AT&T, our, our set-aside numbers from AT&T, um, that's going away. They're no longer offering that to us okay. as a city, so we have to do something. Um, we have a block of DID numbers, which is the direct in dial. All of, like what Cindy just described, all of those numbers will, will be able to be programmed and configured as we want them. So as Commissioner McDowell wants a phone, no problem. We just... We just log in and he can, he has two options. He can have a phone, like he can use his cell phone, personally owned or whatever, and and almost like it has another SIM card within it, he can select through the app to make a phone call from his desk, even though it's from his cell phone. 
Mm-hmm. So there's there's a lot of there's a lot of configurability to this the system. All of that said, we have to do something because the original AT and T group of numbers, the PRI that we have assigned to us, is is going away. Right. And that's not, not just specific to the city. Right. It's an entire project that AT and T has rolled out, uh, you know, across all their areas that they service that they have decided no longer to support those old T1s, as they call them, which the PRI is what um, the chief is referring to. Thank you very much. I think we all learned something. Uh, is there any other questions? I'm sorry, I, 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 I always bring up, you know, worst case scenarios. That's why military training, you know, they taught us about electronic, electronic magnetic pulses and Everything has to be shielded, and you always have a backup. So we had better redundancy under this than sadly we already do with our existing phones. We've had out of existing phones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but that's that's still the hard wire. If you go into the room here, all the the spaghetti in there that we've had system outages that you have to dispatch somebody to repair and things. This will actually come up much quicker. So now you're giving us all nightmares about what could have happened. <laughs> Thank you. You can all worry about the what ifs. <laughs> That's why we have great hair. Okay. Any other questions? Discussion? Okay, hearing none. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner Frierson? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Fisher? Aye. All right, next up on the agenda is departmental commentary, and we're going to do the round robin, and we'll start with Director Ionson. Uh, thank you, sir. We had some inquiries about uh, waste management holiday schedule. Uh, there's actually six holidays they uh, observe and they delay the service by one day. New Year's just passed, Monday, January 2nd. Memorial Day, Monday, 29th. July 4th, Tuesday the 4th. Labor Day, Monday, September 4th. Thanksgiving, Thursday, November 23rd. And Christmas Day, Monday, December 25th. Uh, all those days will be delayed by one day of service. Anything else? Is that it? Mm-hmm. All right. We'll move on to Director Roberts. Thank you, sir. The County DOT has sent out a uh, memo on adopt the highway as, as an open enrollment uh, until January 31st right now. Uh, in this area, uh, 9th Street from Green Bay to Sheridan is uh, unadopted. 33rd from Green Bay to Galilee is also on that. So if anybody has any groups or people that were interested in helping out the community, um, participants must be at least age 10 years of age, and anyone younger than 18 years of age must have an adult supervision. You can contact them on the Lake County uh, website for more information. Okay. So, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chief Street. Well, good evening again. I just wanted to provide a brief update on the smoke alarm program that we had started uh, a few weeks back. Uh, We've only installed nine smoke alarms so far. Uh, We have access to a lot more. So if uh, homeowners within the city want to get in touch with us to have us come out and check their alarm and possibly install one or two for them, uh, we'd like to hear from them. So they can get uh, all the information on uh, our website or our Facebook page. Um, Send us an email or call. Or, and we'll be happy to check that out. Chief Barton. Good evening again, thank you. Um, just to turn your attention to some recent uh, legislative updates, we've had the safety bill has been paused uh, as, we, as we see it right now or as it was presented. Um, and we will look forward to seeing some additional updates from the, the courts in Illinois on that. If you have any questions or concerns about things, um, feel free to call us, we, we'll try to handle what we can. Um, additionally, there were some um, some weapons bans laws that went into effect. Um, I would uh, just say that if there's a weapon that you do not wish to own any longer as a, as a citizen, pursuant to the changes of the, the laws, we've had several weapons turned over already to the police department for relinquishment. Um, we, we can do that for you if that's if that's something that you're wanting to do or if you are potentially taking over a family member's household due to 
age or a death or something of that nature and you find something like that, um, we, we, we are willing to take those, those weapons in um, and dispose of them as, as appropriate. Um, and then just one last thing is every couple of months I remind um, 872, uh, I'm sorry, 847 662 2222 is Crime Stoppers. If you see something, say something. Uh, they want your information, not your name. Um, we, do, we do work with them regularly, so we, we, we do try to develop tips from those, uh, from those calls that, that they, that they uh, take in. So, uh, again, if you see something, say something at 847-662-2222. Right, thank you very much. Administrator Nabel. I will cover myself and Director Conway's comments since it's only her seventh day and I'm not no, sure. No, she gets to talk yet. on her own. <laughs> no, you can't, um, you can't cover. <laughs> so You may have seen on Facebook or from your actual water bills that there was an error in the um, due to the due date on the most recent bills. Um, just so everyone knows, we we bill in a bill covers three months and we bill a third of the city each month. So the bills that went out uh, in just recently had a meter read date of December 2nd and that date defaulted on the due date as well. Um, so you may see that those bills were December 2nd due date. The due date on those is actually January 23rd. Um, unfortunately at the same time it was our shut off cycle for the November bills that were past due and unpaid. So there was a lot of speculation about us going out there and shutting off bills because people hadn't paid the December 2nd due date. That was not the case. There will be no uh, late fees or penalties assessed as a result of that error. Um, we posted it on our Facebook and our website um, and just appreciate everyone's patience or understanding. Some people may not have even noticed the date on it. They got the bill, they paid it. Um, as normal, but um, because the bills went out January 5th and had a due date of December 2nd, um, understandably that got some people concerned, but the due date of those are January 23rd. Let me apologize for any inconvenience on that. Anything else? Anything else exciting? Nothing? Nothing. Never. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Uh, and we want to welcome our new finance director. If you if you just want to briefly introduce yourself. I'm Chris, new finance director, and it's day seven, so I don't, don't have She hasn't left to yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, I haven't um, left, they've been taking my keys. <laughs> so yeah. It's welcome. gone good. I really enjoy it. I welcome and we're gonna get you a nameplate so that everybody knows who's on order at the next meeting. I resign uh, and <laughs> no, okay, so. all right, uh, Commissioner McDowell, do you have anything you want to share with the with the audience and the public here? Yeah, well considering this is uh, our first meeting of the new year, happy and healthy new year to everybody. That's it. Brief and to the point, uh, Commissioner Carson. I'll echo the same. I'll also call attention to community forum at the high school on January 28th. Uh, that'll be at 10 a.m. Uh, and that's going to be in the South Commons. So uh, if you know someone, share it, show up. We'd like to hear from you. I believe postcards went out on that that people should have yes. received too, right? They should have, yeah. Okay. Just, yeah. That's what that is. Just a that's gentle reminder. Running. Um, and like I said, if you can't make it, refer a friend. It's it's always a good event, and the, there's going to be food, right? Uh, I don't light, know. I, light, I didn't check on that this time. Light refreshments. Light, light refreshments. Yeah. You know, bagels. So, please, coffee. You know, coffee and bagels. Maybe some orange juice. Commissioner Holmes. Nothing tonight. Nothing at all. No. Uh, very just very briefly, so that everyone you know, uh, Mayor McKinney is currently he's in D.C. Um, he is part of the it's the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Basin Mayor Cities Association. Seaway, yeah, St. Lawrence yes. Seaway, yeah, yes, uh, which, he's, which he's talked about uh, previously before. So they are in D.C. They are having meetings with um, the White House and the administration discussing infrastructure, uh, lead line replacement, 
and some other issues that impact communities here around the Great Lakes. So that's why he could not be here with us tonight. So we wish him a lot of luck and hopefully he'll bring back some interesting information to all of us. Uh, as has been mentioned, this is the first meeting of the new year. We got a lot of things coming up. Um, so looking forward to it and uh, hope you all had a good day. So we're gonna move on to announcements. February 7th at 7 p.m. there will be a Zion City Council meeting here in this chamber. On February 21st at 6 p.m. there will be a Zion Township Board meeting followed at 7 p.m. by the Zion City Council meeting. And just I mean, Commissioner Frierson already mentioned the um, community, um, what is it officially called again? Community Forum. I believe. Community Forum on uh, January 28th. Yes at Zion Benton High School. And so I think that's it for today, this evening. Thank you all for coming out. I really appreciate seeing a lot of faces, familiar and new. And uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner Frierson? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Fisher? Aye. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen. Is your 28th floor 10? Yeah. Is that goofy up there? Oh, it's not to be. I'm not going to do it. I was just knocked out. I didn't even know it. Yeah.